What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out the brand new Nexus 5X. So this is one of two new Nexus phones for 2015, the 5X and the 6P. We'll take a look at the 6P in a future video, but the 5X is the budget-friendly phone here. It starts off at 379 at 16 gigs and goes up to 429 for 32 gigs. Now that's the model I would recommend because we do not have expandable storage in this phone. So the 5X is the successor to the Nexus 5, which launched two years ago. Once again, it's also made by LG and is launching with the latest version of Android, Android 6.0 or Marshmallow, which we'll explore in this video. Now, unlike the 6P, this is all plastic construction, but does feature some of the same features, including the same 12 megapixel camera with laser autofocusing and a fingerprint sensor on the back. Now, before we get into details here, let's get to the unboxing to take a look at the packaging. Now, the packaging itself is very familiar to Google, very simple. We have a cardboard box with a sleeve that we can pull off. We have a tab along the back that we have to cut in order to lift open the box, but you can see at the top, the box is actually embossed with the Nexus X branding. Lifting the lid of the box, first thing we'll see here is the instruction pamphlet. No words here, just images, which explains some of the major features and how to install the nano SIM. Now inside the box, we'll find all of our neatly arranged accessories, including our USB Type-C charger. So this is a rapid charger, thanks to USB Type-C, which can support more voltage. So we can rapidly charge the battery within this phone. Now you can see along the side of the charger, there is a USB-C connector, and that's because this is USB-C to USB-C. So not USB Type-A to USB Type-C. So it's all USB-C on both sides. And of course, we also need a USB Type-C cable, which comes included. Now, unlike the 6P, the 5X does not come with a micro USB to USB Type-C adapter. Now, lifting the phone up, you can see it's wrapped in this frosted plastic and it's available in three colors, but in my case, I got the quartz or white, but it's also available in carbon or ice, which is kind of a light blue green color. Now, before we unwrap the phone, let's take a quick look at the literature packet that's underneath it. So one of the flyers we have here is a 90 day promotion for Google Play Music. So this is good for new customers. This cannot be redeemed if you're an existing Play Music customer. We also have a packet which includes our SIM ejection tool. And lastly, we get our warranty and regulatory guide. Getting the plastic off, you can see the phone is really sharp looking. Very similar to the Nexus 5 uh, from the previous generation, especially if you got the white one. Now, the first thing you notice when you handle the phone is just how light it is and that soft, silky texture to the plastic along the back. So it's not just a hard plastic like the previous white Nexus 5. So that lightweight and the grippy texture makes it feel really nice to handle. Now, next up, let's go ahead and boot up our device for the first time and get it set up. During the setup process, you are prompted to set up the fingerprint scanner and it works really quickly. Now with a rear facing fingerprint scanner, you probably just want to program your index finger, but you have the option to add as many fingers as you want during the setup process. So taking a close look at the design of the Nexus 5X, on the front, we have a 5.2 inch LCD IPS panel. This is 1080p, good for 424 pixels per inch. It's covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 3 instead of Corning Gorilla Glass 4 like the Nexus 6P. Along the top, we'll find our earpiece along with a 5 megapixel front facing camera, good for 1080p HD video. Toward the bottom, we have our loudspeaker. Now that loudspeaker does not work with the earpiece for stereo sound. It's just a single loudspeaker. That loudspeaker does incorporate an LED notification light, which is RGB. On the right side, we'll find our sleep wake power button just above our volume rocker. And I find these buttons to be a little too flush and lack the tactile feel that I'd like to see here, but they do get the job done. Along the left side, we'll find our nano SIM tray, which you can eject with the included SIM ejector. Toward the top, we'll find a microphone and toward the bottom, we'll find our USB Type-C connector along with a microphone and a headphone jack. So along the back, we have quite a bit going on back here. We have a 12.3 megapixel rear facing camera, which can record video in 4K resolution. This also has a dual LED flash and a laser autofocusing mechanism. And of course, right below that, we have our fingerprint sensor. Also on the back is our Nexus and LG branding, and we do have NFC. And of course, with a fingerprint sensor and NFC, we do have Android Pay, which works together. Now, in terms of specs, they're pretty modern for a mid-range phone. We have a Snapdragon 808 hexa-core processor with 2 gigs of RAM and an Adreno 418 GPU. So in terms of our benchmarks, we're seeing pretty solid mid-range performance. This is actually almost identical to the performance of the Moto X Pure. So they have the same processors, but the Moto X Pure does come with 3 gigs of RAM. 
And as expected, this does fall short of the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus or the iPhone 6S Plus, but of course those cost almost twice as much. Next up, let's take a look at the new software. So this is Android 6.0 or Marshmallow. Now it doesn't look significantly different, but does add some new tweaks here. Now one of the great things about the Nexus 5X is that you can wake up the device and unlock it just by tapping the fingerprint sensor on the back. So it's really quick here. So in fact, you can basically wake up the device in your pocket and once you pull it out, it's ready to go. Now you do get some vibration or haptic feedback when you successfully unlock the device. You get a single vibration, you get a double vibration if it unsuccessfully reads your fingerprint. So right now I just got a double tap because I didn't squarely place my fingerprint on the fingerprint sensor. Now if you look at the lock screen here and incorrectly place your finger on the uh, sensor, you can see it gives you a little warning to tell you what's going on. Now, if you do this too many times, you'll have to enter in your passcode. Now you can also quickly launch the camera app just by double pressing the lock button. This works system wide. So whether the device is locked or not, you can just double press it to quickly launch into the app. So on that lock screen, we have quick access to Google Now so we can swipe up to launch into it. Of course, you can also launch into the camera app this way as well. Uh, we can also see all of our notifications, which we can expand out and clear all if we want along with our notification cards. If we swipe down again, you can see all of our quick setting toggles here, including our brightness slider. We can also jump to one of our accounts if we have one registered. And then we can go to our settings panel as well, but we have to unlock our device. So let's go and unlock it. Takes us right to the settings panel, but first let's take a look at the home screen. So on the home screen, the pretty familiar Android experience here. So if we swipe to the right, we get to our Google Now launcher. So we can see all of our recent cards here. Of course, you can also say, okay, Google, What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills, Michigan? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester Hills is 68 degrees with scattered showers. Definitely not the best speaker here, but the loudspeaker is toward the bottom here. No stereo speakers, this is your earpiece up top. So on the main home screen, we can bring up our editor so we can change our wallpapers. We can take a look at some of the new Android wallpapers here. So you can see some of them right here, all shorelines, uh, some rivers, and then some material design themes here as well. We also have some landscapes, we have the pyramids, more landscapes, so again, really nice selection of wallpapers to pick from. We also have our widget, so we can see our new widget interface, so you can see it's a scrolling design here instead of the horizontal scroll. We also have settings, so we can jump right to our home screen settings if we want, so we can turn off some of the uh, Google Now features. Of course, we also have our drop down notification sheet, so a single swipe brings up our notifications, swipe down again, we get to our settings panel. Of course, you can also use two fingers to jump right to the settings panel if you want. So of course, we have our brightness slider, quick setting toggles for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and some additional controls we can tap on here to expand out. We also have do not disturb, which have been removed from the volume control. So we have total silence, so you can turn this on and set a specific duration for that. Alarms only and priority only. Of course, we have airplane mode, auto rotate, flashlights, you can turn on your flashlight quickly, location settings, and you can cast your screen to a nearby device like a Chromecast. So in terms of the navigation keys, they look pretty much the same. We have back, home, and overview. This shows us all of our recently accessed apps, which you can tap on to reaccess, or we can swipe to dismiss. Now Android 6.0 introduces something called Now on Tap, which is integrated with the home button. So instead of swiping up to get to Google Now, we now tap and hold to activate Now on Tap. Now we're gonna need some context on the screen in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and jump into our browser here. So right now I'm looking at Autoblog. So if I tap and hold to activate Now on Tap, it's scanning the entire website and will bring up some relevant information. So this allows me to search for Lincoln MKX through Google or look for images. So if I just wanna tap on it, this will show me images for the 2016 Lincoln MKX. And this will do a number of other things here that will link to actions, such as navigation, adding a new contact, or that sort of thing. Now this works system-wide. So for example, if I'm looking at the Play Store here and bring up Google Now, you can see it will search what I'm looking at here and bring up relevant information. So I see Trivia, Crack, Shakira, Minions, Paradise, Despicable Me, and Marquez. So with Marquez, I see YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Facebook News, and Images. So this will perform Google searches to bring me right to those specific platforms. So for example, if I wanna look at Instagram from Marquez, it brings me right to that page. But of course, if you just want classic Google Now, you can tap the G down here, it takes you right to your Google Now launcher. Take a look at those volume controls. Again, they have removed the do not disturb settings. So now we have independent controls for our system volume, music volume, as well as alarm or notification volume. We also get a revised app drawer for Android 6.0. So we now have a scrolling app drawer so we can scroll vertically and it's alphabetized. In fact, if you grab this handlebar along the side, you can jump to parts of the alphabet. So if you have lots of apps, this is especially useful. In fact, you can see it, it highlights the first app in that alphabet uh, so you can quickly access it. Now you can see up top, we have the separate section here for recently accessed or popular apps. So this will populate with your frequent apps uh, so you don't have to scroll through it to find it. Of course, you can also just search your app drawer as well. 
We also get some updates to the settings panel. So under the settings panel, it does look pretty familiar, but if you go to apps, you can see we now have control over app permissions right from the app manager here. So we can jump right to our permissions and modify what has access to those apps. We also have a revision to the storage in USB settings, so we can see exactly what's taking up the space and where it's located. We also have a section for memory usage, so we can see how much memory we're currently using, and we can see the entire history of memory usage among all of our apps. We also have a section just for Google, so instead of having to dive into different parts of the settings panel to find all of these, they're all in one location. So this allows us to manage our Google services, such as ads, Android Pay, connected apps, data management, Google Fit, Google Photos Backup, and more. So all of that is now under one roof for easy access. And of course, if you go to About This Phone, you can see we're running Android 6.0 and we do get a new Easter egg. So let's keep tapping here until we get to it. So you can see this marshmallow theme here and we get a new Flappy Bird game with a countdown timer. And you can see we have this marshmallow theme here. And as you tap on the screen, you actually get these little indicators to assist you with uh, the tapping action that helps you get across these barriers. So we also get a new camera app. So we can tap anywhere in the scene to focus. We can also zoom in and out. And you can see we get a little graphic here. As you can see, it's also adjusting the white balance. To snap our photograph. We can also switch between the rear facing and front facing camera. Of course, I'm covering the camera right now, but there I am with my camera. So let's go and switch back here. Now, if you want to record video, all I have to do is swipe to the right. This brings up the video app. So now we can record. And as we're recording, you can see we can tap on the shot to adjust exposure and focus as well. What we can't do here is snap a photograph at the same time. Now, while we're in video mode, we can also enable our LED flash if we want, and you can enable slow motion. So 120 frames per second slow motion is available if you toggle it on here. So again, a very simple app. We also get to some of our options here. So they're pretty limited. We have photosphere, panorama, lens blur, which gives you a depth of field effect, and then we have settings. Let's take a look at settings here. So under settings, we have our resolution and quality. So the back camera, the main camera here is 12.2 megapixels. Now that's four by three. So if you want 16 by nine, you'll have to crop it down to 8.3 megapixels. We also have video, so we do have UHD 4K, so we can turn that on if we want, and then we have our front camera, which goes up to 1080p. In terms of the front camera, it's also 5 megapixels at 4x3. Again, if you want 16x9, it crops down to 2.1 megapixels. Now, in terms of the camera app, we do have laser-assisted autofocusing, which does a pretty good job finding accurate focus, although this camera doesn't do it really quickly. and also takes some time to snap the photograph, so it's not the fastest camera out there, but that's to be expected with maybe a lower-budget phone. The camera app also has a timer for three seconds or 10 seconds. We also have HDR plus, HDR plus auto or off. And then of course we have auto, flash on or off. What's going on guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the new front facing camera on the Nexus 5X, which is five megapixels, good for 1080p HD video. And it does a really good job here, really clear video. And as you can see, when I really challenge the exposure compensation, it's able to keep up with it. So you can still see my face uh, and the background is not entirely washed out here. So really good camera overall. Now in terms of camera quality, again, we have a 12.3 megapixel sensor, so we get good, clear, crisp images, especially in daylight conditions. Exposure and color accuracy are great, and it's able to find focus fairly quickly thanks to the aid of laser-assisted autofocusing, so we're able to get nice macro shots with good depth of field. Now in terms of low-light performance, this is where this camera suffers a little bit more. Low-light images exhibit quite a bit of noise and interference, and you'll see a lot of color noise and a lot of grain, and you'll lose a lot of color detail. Uh, so low-light images definitely is isn't a strength for this camera, but you're still able to see quite a bit of detail because the processor seems to be really sharpening the images, but it does tend to over sharpen. So some of the details just come out pretty grainy. So in terms of video, we do have 4K without optical image stabilization, but I'm pretty impressed by the software stabilization. So handheld 4K video actually looks pretty good, but I did run into two issues with 4K video recording. One of them is continuous autofocusing. Uh, this camera does tend to hunt around quite a bit while recording video. So the transition for focusing isn't very smooth or natural. So you'll really see it jump around. The other issue I have is that there was a lot of frame dropping. So I ran into some performance issues while recording 4K video, especially if I've been recording 4K video for a few minutes. It doesn't get really hot. It just seems to stutter as it starts recording video after a few minutes of use. Now, hopefully this is something that they can improve with future software updates. Now, in terms of performance, one of the great things about a Nexus phone is that it runs really lean here. So, of course, we're running near stock Android. There's no bloatware. And the hardware here is more than capable of keeping up with Android 6.0. So, performance overall is pretty smooth and quick. The only issue I seem to run into is RAM performance. So, there's not as much RAM to work with as you would see on other phones. So, for example, the Moto X Pure, same specs here, but has more RAM. So, if you're scrolling through a page, it has to spend less time sort of reloading parts of that page. So, you can see that, especially with The Verge. In terms of gaming performance, it's also pretty decent as well. Of course, we don't have flagship specs here, but it's able to keep up with some of the more demanding titles I have. 
So in terms of our battery life, we have a 2700 milliamp hour battery built in. And in my benchmark testing with the screen set to maximum brightness, I've been able to get about five hours out of the phone. That's actually pretty impressive for a phone that isn't super sized like the iPhone 6S Plus or the Note 5. Now, while this display is definitely clear and crisp, it's not especially bright or vivid. Obviously, if you want something more colorful with deeper blacks and more vivid colors, you want to go with the AMOLED display on the 6P. But of course, with 424 pixels per inch, it's a really great display at this price point. Ultimately, the Nexus 5X is the most affordable way of getting into the Nexus experience, which is worth the price of entry, I think. I really like this device. It's lightweight and purposeful, and it's really easy to use, isn't too big, isn't too heavy, isn't too bulky, and the materials are nice and grippy. And just like the Nexus 5, it's really about focusing on the software experience, and I really like Android 6.0 in its natural state. But the Nexus 5X isn't the big deal it was when the Nexus 5 launched. We have a lot of mid-range phone options that offer sometimes better specs than this like the Moto X Pure, which can be had at a very similar price point, but it gives you a quad AC display and I think a better camera, as well as three gigs of RAM, which should improve some of the performance issues I ran into with the Nexus 5X. But of course, the Nexus 5X is the cheapest way of getting a great fingerprint sensor that works with mobile payments. So if that's important to you, the Nexus 5X is perhaps your best option. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for me in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.